um, uh, sometimes I just need to get away and 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 go be be uh, myself and be anonymous again and 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 find a a, a drag queen cafe or or somewhere where I can uh, I I can just uh, disappear and and uh, and anyhow uh, I did this at one uh, CEP event uh, um, and and. Uh, was it was uh, uh, far enough away from the venue that I was pleased that, that I could I could just be alone for a little while and then the 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 waitress came up to me and and said excuse me are you Shad Maruna from from the <laughs> University of Liverpool and I I just couldn't believe it and I said I I, I guess you're 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 uh, uh, at the conference and she said no you're wearing a name tag that says Shad Shad Maruna University of Liverpool so so yeah uh, 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 celebrity it's it's something else yeah yeah right but. Uh, Right, I am really delighted to be here today. I I I do love the, the these meetings and 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 was was honored to be be asked and and especially to be here in in Barcelona. Um, I was was asked to talk about desistance, uh, which is 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 pretty much what I do, and so so very happy always to 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 fly the flag for desistance. But I was in in particular, uh, they asked me to talk about desistance and lived experience, and they said that Andy Breeley was going to be here. From Leeds, uh, and 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 that really sold me on it. I I, I think um, we're living in a really exciting moment uh, around lived experience at the moment, and and nobody's better than Andy on this 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 complicated uh, topic. And 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 so I'm here to to listen to him tomorrow, and he he's he's got uh, more of a slot than than, than I've got. I'm, oh, I'm gonna set my timer so I know when and 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 uh, uh uh and keep keep track of the time anyway um this uh uh so i i uh uh i can't wait there is it there it is start to start yes um so 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 i i'm 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 going to try to do both but but mostly i'm going to let andy talk uh, about lived experience and and i'm going to try to set that up with something i to talk about called desistance as a social movement uh I'm going to try to do three things today, I think. Um, so, so first, I'm going to just talk briefly about the academic research around listening to success stories, and and, and that is desistance from crime. So, so that's that's something you've heard of already. I'm um, then are, are those slides? Oh, they're behind me. Okay, good. Uh, uh, I'm going to look at these slides, but you're you're looking there, so it'll be. Uh, I'll try to remember to point back. Then, then I will uh, uh, talk about um, how success stories impact on justice practice which is is the the the, um, the world that, that you live in uh and then then third uh, I, i'm i'm possibly going going to get into this uh, how how these justice stories are making an impact on on, on the world more broadly uh I've got a few slides uh, in, in, in Spanish I'm trying to be inclusive but but yeah I went around the room and 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 this may be worse uh, for for uh, for you than the than uh, than English um what what is desistance is what this slide says and and so for those who who are unfamiliar with 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 the concept and 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 i must say uh even those people who use the term a lot uh don't always know you know the the origins and what it means desistance is is basically a descriptive term it 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 um it it's a, a terrible word but but uh uh, to say and 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 a lot of people um, you know, are annoyed by it, but there's really kind of no better word uh, to use. There, there's an expression in English. Um, sometimes a lawyer will say it, or 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 a police officer to cease and desist. Uh, so to cease is to stop doing something, and to desist is to not do it again. Uh, so so you you know to to cease and desist um, is is is. Um, um, uh, 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 what we're looking at with 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 desistance research it isn't so much how people stop offending uh, uh, because like smoking people stop offending all the time uh, it's very easy to stop offending and 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 although we can measure uh, when they stop offending that's often the last offense they've had so it's a very odd thing to try to uh, study that moment of the stopping of offending. What we're interested in is the desist uh, part afterwards. So, so it's harder to measure, harder to, to look at because desisting is essentially nothing. It's, it's a lack of behavior, uh, uh, but it's an important lack of behavior because it's saying uh, here are individuals who are not doing that thing that made us made them interesting to us uh, to, to begin with. So, so uh, um, to, to me, 
uh, what is uh, uh, to, what does it mean to study desistance, to research desistance? It, it, it's basically to privilege success stories, and 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 uh, um, uh, we can do this in a variety of ways. We're, we're we're asking, you know, how people desist and 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 why they desist. Uh, um, but but and and we can do that by by following people longitudinally over time uh, and 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 watching desistance in real time, or you can start uh, uh, with the desistance and work retrospectively uh, for, from there. But but either way, uh, it, it, it is recognizing the the what we can learn from from successes, and 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 this seems uh, an obvious point. Uh, but if you think about it, most of what we see in the justice system, most of what we have always studied in criminology are the failures, are, are, are people who come back time and time again. We, we, we're, we're very interested in why did they do it? What got this person in, 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 into crime? And, and why did they, they, they come back to crime? Uh, desistance flips that lens and, and, and looks in, in, in a more hopeful way. Um, just as, as a little bit of context, um, desistance emerged in, 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 in the late nineties and, 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 uh, um, I, I, I emerged in the late nineties as, <laughs> as an academic and, and it, it, at this moment, at this point, we were in a, a funny place in, in, in the U S I, I, I'm, I should have said I'm from, from Chicago. I, I, I uh, um, so, so not far from Cincinnati to, to my fellow Americans here. Uh, and um, uh, but but uh, uh, moved to the UK uh, around about the same time in, in the mid 90s. But but the the very the US and, and indeed the UK uh, in, in a very big way, even, even when Tony Blair was elected, maybe more so when Tony Blair was elected, we're in this moment of, of panic, uh, what we call moral panics about young people uh, and, and crime. And, and, and this was probably when, when Andy was a young man. Uh, uh, so, so this was Andy we were very worried about uh, and, and, uh, uh, and maybe, maybe for good reason. But, but we, we even gave them a, a lovely name in the U.S. We called them super predators. And there, there, there was there's these uh, um, back of a, a, a page uh, um, predictions made uh, that that these super predators were going to grow up to be the the biggest crime wave the United States had ever seen, and 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 we were really panicked about this. Uh, there was uh, uh, all all these estimations that 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 you know because uh, these the these young boys and they were boys uh, for the most part were such a, a terror to us that 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 um, uh, basically the world was going to collapse over the next 10, 20 years. Uh, the, the the good news was. Uh, all these predictions were were not just wrong; they were the absolute opposite. That that that, like every other generation, the super predators grew out of crime, uh, and and in fact, we saw in the the, the first two decades of, of this century the biggest crime drop the the U.S. had, had experienced uh, in in any of our lifetimes. Crime had just sort of gone up and up and up, uh, and and then uh, um, it 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 is now started to to to, to tail down with with a couple of little blips. Here and there, but but there was never this this wave of of, of the, the the super predators uh, growing into uh, adulthood, and 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 so this was the the, the context in which we were arguing uh, uh, when when the early desistance research came out. My my book the the, the that was mentioned earlier uh, came out in two thousand and one, and 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 I, I guess uh, um, I, I uh, well I know now. Uh, the work is very much not radical at all, but in the context of, of, of 2001, this was a big thing to say, wait, actually, people are going to grow out of crime. This isn't going to be a lifetime. And and, and this was, I still think, the, the, the main contribution we made as, as criminologists uh, to to the world and around this this desistance debate. And, and this is, is Robert Sampson and, and, and John Lobb, who have, who have gone on to, to huge careers and and, and and all sorts uh well beyond uh, um, um the rest of us assistant scholars but but that they, they basically found empirically and 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 many of us uh, uh, argue theoretically that that crime declines with age it doesn't matter what the the the, the sort of we, we we don't have any way of predicting who these kind of lifetime uh persistent uh who the super predators will be that grow up into the 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 uh, serial predators and, and, and the like, uh, um, you know, from the best of the research we have, 
everybody desists eventually some faster some slower uh and 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 this is really good news uh for 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 criminal justice and 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 for all of us um and 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 this is something that that uh we in criminology had known for for a long time we 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 have this this famous graphic called the the age crime curve and 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 this is uh uh, have, has been so stable over over um, uh, the, uh, different contexts and different generations uh, in, 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 in any context where people are able to collect statistical data that there, there's been arguments in the field that this is a, a kind of a, a natural uh, truth uh, in, in, in criminal behavior. It, it, in, it turns out that that uh, well, th that debate has largely been lost. That 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 you know, different countries do vary in this age crime curve, uh, and in fact, we're now seeing this remarkable <laughs> lack of offending among young people. Uh, they're they're on their phones, they're on their 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 computers, and 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 they're not out on the streets uh, uh, offending uh, the way they used to. You know, what's wrong with kids today, and and all that. But but uh, uh, but because of that, we've seen shifts in in the age crime curve. But but generally, uh, um, uh, we we see a pattern very much like this, where where you you get this uh, a great deal of offending between the ages of fifteen and thirty, and then you get a, a, a steady decline uh, th th thereafter. Um, I'm looking for looking for my notes, um, and and, and uh, you know we we can't ever estimate these things. We'll never know statistically uh, um, exactly how many people, because uh, you know there's these huge dark figures of crime where we're not detecting it. But but the the longitudinal studies that have followed the same group of people over time estimate that something like 85 percent will will desist by the time they reach age of of 30 years old. So so. Um, um, th th this is uh, and 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 those others. It's not to say they they continue offending till their graves. Although some will will die early, of course, uh, most will desist there. You know, within the next few years in, in, into their thirties. Um, but uh, as I mentioned, uh, you know, there, there, although there has been attempts to try to link this to to biology, to changes in testosterone levels, to to and and, and all these things, biology matters. We know that as, as all of us are aging, we we know that aging is a real thing, and uh, and there's no fighting at the best that we 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 can do. Uh, we also know that that uh, um, age is just a number, and 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 that it, it uh, indexes a, a large number of changes. Some of them biological, but lots of them social, psychological, and the the, the goal of desistance research has been to try to. Uh, uh, um, take apart, dissect these these different factors that lead to this change, uh, and and uh, um, constitute the mediating mechanisms in this process of, of growth. And 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 uh, um, my study was one of them that that, that did this. Uh, this was a study done oops, in Liverpool back in the 1990s. And 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 uh, I only put this up to, to say there was two samples in the study. There was a, a, a group that were desisting from crime, and and a group that were persisting in crime. Uh, and 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 on on the other characteristics, I tried to match them as closely as I could. So so uh, the median age of both of these samples was thirty years old. Uh, and and uh, um, both samples came from deprived areas in, in, in Liverpool. Both had, had uh, struggled in, in school and had all the usual risk factors we now think of as ACEs and, and, and the like. Uh, but the difference was one group was succeeding uh, and, and one uh, was still remaining involved in criminal behavior. And, and, and my, my book tried to understand why uh, that was. It, it, it's a book, though, about stories. This is one of the stories. It's a book about human beings and their stories. Um, this is one of those. This is a, a friend named Paul, and he's going to come back later in, in my slides. Uh, but the two things that, that, that people remember from this work are these scripts. Uh, I, 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 I argued that that people in the desisting group had a, a, a commonalities in the way they understood their lives and told their stories that I called a, a, a redemption script. And those in, in the, the offending group had something called a condemnation script. And I'll, and I'll go through those just really quickly uh, before I move into the other the things I really want to talk about. Um, the, the, the condemnation script you'll be very familiar with. You'll see all the time. Uh, again, born to multiple disadvantages. We now talk about these things as ACEs. 
Uh, they were let down or harmed by by uh, all forms of authority in society. Uh, their, their their parents first, uh, um, the, then many were obviously in in in, in the care system, and they, and they were let down by by the state in that regard. They were certainly let down by schools, uh, by 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 others in their community. Uh, uh, lots of of uh, um, suspicion uh, uh, that was well earned due to to the great deal of of, of harms they they experienced. Particularly, they had negative experiences of the justice system, which they didn't find very just at all. That they felt like they were they were, they were uh, targeted and 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 harassed uh, uh, by by the justice system, which they 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 you know didn't uh, um, turn their lives around as a result of, and 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 as a result, they they had a lost a sense of, of hope, of purpose, and, and they, they, this condemnation. They felt condemned. To the lives that, that they were living, that, that maybe I am just a scumbag, and 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 it sort of taken on this this, this identity. The desistance script, uh, obviously, the more more optimistic of these, had all the same aces, all the same struggles uh, um, uh, as as the other group. We we found very little difference in terms of the way they talked about their childhoods, the way they talked about their offending, and so forth. Uh, what the one big difference the, those in the desisting group were able to find mentors, uh, somebody who who also desisted oftentimes, whether this was a, a family member, this was somebody in their their criminal uh, network, uh, um, this was somebody, uh, you know, a, 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 a somebody from the neighborhood, they found someone who had turned their lives around and 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 they, they were able to 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 mirror and, and, and learn from from that person. Uh, they also found a person, and maybe this was the same person, but but often this was a girlfriend, a wife, a, a, a boyfriend, who who saw something in them uh, and made them realize that they could be more than just who who they thought they were. They could be more than just a, a, an ex prisoner. Uh, and, and then importantly, um, um, they also found roles that they could play in society, some some uh, situation in which they uh, weren't just the recipient of others' generosity, but they could be uh, a, a, a leader. They could be somebody who, who was put in, in, in positions of authority, and, and, and they found that they had something to contribute uh, to their communities, to their families, as fathers, as coaches, as, as uh, uh, employees and, and the like. And then, then, then finally, that change uh, in identity uh, got formally recognized. Others told them, uh, you know, you have done a total 360 turnaround. We, I remember you when you were doing this and that, and now you are a changed person. You have done so much for, for this community and these kind of things. And that uh, uh, identity got reflected to them, and 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 they in, ended up internalizing those those reflections of what others saw in them, and they started to believe in in, in their own change. So so that's uh, uh, my book in, in in a nutshell. That that was twenty four years ago. Now this is uh, uh, twenty years uh, of scholarship has followed, and 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 in particular. A huge number of, of desistance books. When when that came out, uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter who who got there first, but I got there first. It was the first book <laughs> on desistance, and and I <laughs> thank you, Joe. I was very pleased uh, with that. There's now loads of books on desistance, uh, uh, and 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 uh, much better books, much bigger samples, much uh, we we've taken it in all much more diverse samples, and and and, and all sorts of things. Uh, the the research has really grown in lots of interesting and important ways um and, and we've even got a movie uh if if you're you're interested uh i say uh, uh look up a road from crime with with english subtitles there's also possibly subtitles in in uh, uh your own language uh there's about seven languages it's it's been translated into so if you just uh, google road from crime with subtitles or google discovering desistance you should find that film uh, this was it was uh, money we got from the Economic and Social Research Council uh, 20 years ago to to um, make a more presentable uh, picture of desistance than just me and Fergus McNeil and others giving these lectures over and over again. Uh, uh, we, we we decided it would be better to to hear it uh, uh, with with different faces and and to see the stories uh, in, in 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 a way and 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 it's it's a fabulous. Uh, uh, short, uh, um, semi-professional uh, undertaking is a lot of fun. Um, what what have we learned in all this desistance literature? This is my my least favorite slide, but I'm trying to get to uh, the, the the new stuff. So so in one slide, 
I'm going to summarize what we know about desistance. It's uh, um, it's obviously much more complicated than this, but it's also fairly simple. You know, at, at the end of the day, uh, desistance research is not rocket science. You you don't need a PhD to to follow this. In fact, most people, if they were to guess what what would separate the sisters from per sisters, they'd probably guess something a lot like this. Uh, first and foremost. Uh, strong social bonds, supports in, in, in your life, people who who find someone who's willing to live with them uh, and 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 be their life partner uh, are going to do better than people who don't. Uh, people who have strong families, uh, mothers, uh, uh, stepfathers who stand by them and 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 support them, or 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 siblings, uh, they're going to do better, uh, uh, be more likely to desist earlier than 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 those people who who, who are floating uh, alone without th these kind of social networks and supports that, that all of us rely on so much. Uh, stable employment, that's that's uh, uh, an obvious one for for uh, for, for all of us uh, uh, that, you know, it's very hard to expect people to to succeed, to go straight if they're not uh, uh, able to find work that, that's steady and meaningful uh, in, in their lives. Uh, the, this one, uh, it says, uh, um, yeah, what does this say? Uh, uh, association uh, with, with uh, people of the same age and same gender, uh, basically moving away from the gang, moving away from the boys, your social network, um, if, if, if any of you. Uh, uh, have a, a group of, of of childhood friends. You know that that the, you're you're most likely your your risk factor of getting arrested at any given time goes up greatly when you go out with 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 your old uh, gang of, of childhood friends. Uh, um, the the likewise in the lives of the sisters, uh, we we know that whether it's settling down into a relationship, finding work. Uh, uh, maybe finding a hobby, finding uh, new networks of friends, whatever it takes to move away from your 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 boys, your your, your network, uh, it, it, you're going to benefit from that. Um, from a more psychological point of view, we know that 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 uh, there are changes in terms of the way uh, th this is uh, people feeling responsible for their future, what we call self-efficacy or hope. Hope has been a big factor in desistance, and and it's you know um, originally was critiqued. Uh, as uh, too fluffy, too too you know soft, uh, but 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 largely folks who who have desisted have said, look, it, it's all about hope. If it weren't for Esperanza, we 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 you know that's all that got me through my my desistance and so forth. So so hope is is a big factor. Also, there's a shift in terms of thinking uh, where individuals move away from more self-centered um i want to to uh, uh explore i want to to uh, you know have a good time uh moving more to being worried about the next generation maybe uh raising their their, their family uh they want to make a contribution to the world they want to see something uh lasting of a legacy rather than just the sort of uh hedonism of, of, of the moment uh, and so, so um, why is all this uh, relevant? Why is 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 desistance important? It's obviously a fascinating topic uh, to study as as social scientists, but but uh, it, it also has real world relevance. Th this came from a, a story uh, uh, from Time Magazine about why crime went away. Uh, again, that that huge crime drop that America experienced in the early two thousands. And in the study, uh, in the article, they they interviewed a bunch of criminologists as to why they think crime went away. And it says the, the, the number one answer criminologists gave was crime has dropped because uh, the a aging society. We have now, uh, uh, we, we had a young society in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Uh, and now we're like everywhere, uh, certainly in Europe, we're, 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 we're having fewer kids and, and, and people are living longer and we're getting an old, we're becoming an older society with, with less young people and more old people. And as a result, uh, uh, crime has dropped. Anyway, in the article, there was this lovely quote, which I won't say in Spanish, but but the, the, it says basically violence is a young person's game. Actually, it says a young man's game, uh, and, and and that's uh, not being sexist. The hombres who, who who are causing most of the trouble. Uh, so so uh, it, it's specifically uh, violence is a young man's game, 
And it, it's been said that the, the most effective crime fighting tool is the 30th birthday. So, so uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, it's funny when you can't read it in Spanish and I have to read it to you. Yeah. Uh, uh, so so uh, suddenly this thing that we were studying in the, in, in the 90s and, and the 2000s, uh, uh, which we thought was just an interesting thing to study, suddenly we realized that we were studying the most effective crime fighting tool. And, and again, remember that it's not just to say, well, we'll wait till they all turn 30, which is, is, is kind of what we do in, in, in the justice systems in the United States. Uh, uh, that's not how desistance works. It's trying to unpack and, 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 and take apart What's happening when people turn 30? What are these mediating mechanisms? What's the, the, the meaning of, of, of age? And, and ideally, can we speed up the clock in, in some way? And this is a quote way back from the 1940s uh, from, from two, two, two psychologists that, that we've always wondered, you know, if we can understand how people desist naturally, surely we can help people desist more quickly. Uh, I am going to get to some of these, these answers, but, but I have a few... Uh, a few more slides uh, to, to get there. So, so generally what we do in the justice system is, you know, we'd like to think, well, this is what we do. We speed up the clock and we help people desist. Well, if you try to think about what factors might impede these natural uh, correlates to desistance, um, you know, stable families, well, if you incarcerate people, it's a real good way to break up uh, uh, family ties. Stable employment, well, we know that sending people to prison is an almost sure way to uh, uh, um, uh, ensure that they're not going to have employment when they, they get out. Move away from the same age, same sex peers. No, we're going to put them all together in these youth, youth justice uh, uh, institutes and the like. So, so you know, all, all these things are impeded largely by what we do in criminal justice. And, and, and if, if anything, you know, the, 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 the evidence seems to be more along the lines of if we just leave folks alone, uh, uh, but of course, we, we, we don't want to do that either. And, they're, they're, you know, these are individuals who were struggling to begin with. So, so uh, uh, um, it, we're, we're in a quandary in terms of doing desistance in, in our justice. And, and that's why you all in probation and community work are, are, are well placed to, to actually do desistance work and, 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 and outside of, of this kind of institutional uh, uh, prison focused uh, environment. Um, very, very quickly. Um, is this uh, uh, what we mean by evidence-based practice? Y yes and no. Uh, um, for the most part, when we talk about doing evidence-based practice, we talk about this, this, this great phrase, what works. Uh, and, and, and when we talk about what works, we're often talking about e evaluating the work that we do, uh, ideally through random control trials, it says that the justice systems, just like any other uh, uh, business or, 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 or enterprise, should be uh, held accountable for or are you, you doing what you say that you're doing. So if you say you're reducing crime, show us the numbers. And, and, and the best way to measure that are, are, are these kind of RCTs and evaluations. And then, you know, a single RCT isn't enough, so you need to look to the meta-analyses, the systematic reviews, and these kind of things. And this is what we generally mean when we talk about what works. Desistance is different. It is still evidence. It, it, it's not anecdotal. It's not uh, uh, something to be dismissed, but it's not what works. Uh, the, the two things are, are different. So, so I always give this example. I've been trying to lose weight for, for as long as I can remember. Uh, but if some of you can just imagine you wanted to lose weight. If you wanted to lose weight, you could do, look at two types of evidence. One, you could look at all the what works evidence that's out there. These are there's a million program evaluations of Weight Watchers, of Jenny Craig, of of, of Ozempic, whatever the newest uh, uh, um, um, miracle cure is. Uh, it's been evaluated with RCTs. Some of these, uh, you, you have to look for who's funded the evaluation, so you need to, to, to examine that. Uh, but but there's a lot of evidence out there. Uh, it's not so good. We're, we're, we're holding out on, on, on Ozempic. does seem to have re real results, but most of it has not been very successful. Uh, uh, but, but, uh, um, but this is one way of looking. 
The other way of looking is, you know, we know that some people do lose weight. We Maybe they took a, a program, maybe they were on 10 different programs, but we know some people, they're terrible people, but but they succeed. They, they, they have lost their weight uh, and they keep it off like desistance. What matters is the keeping it off. And so one way uh, uh, of looking at if, if you can't find successful evaluations, and again, in that field like ours, there's a lot of nothing works uh, if evaluations out there, start with a different starting point. Instead of looking at these programs, look at the individual journeys, the lives. What did this person do to, to, to lose the weight and keep it off? Yes, they, they, they ate less and they, they exercise more, but did they change in the way they think about food? Did they think about exercise? Did they change in their lifestyle? Were people supporting them? Did they, they have a new job? Did they do what happened in their lives that they were able to, to find the success? And that's what we do in desistance research. Are the two things opposed to each other? Not at all. They're, they're complementary forms of evidence, of knowledge. And, 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 and I, I like to think of them in that way. Uh, Fergus McNeil has been one of the sort of the biggest advocates for translating desistance research into practice. He's, he's not done desistance research himself, but he is a former practitioner from Scotland who, who has been the, the, the kind of leading voice on this. And, and this is how he summarizes what this desistance model is uh, uh, that, and how it differs from, from rehabilitation. Whereas rehabilitation is something done to an individual, desistance is something individuals do themselves. And so a desistance model, if we were to think about it, needs to, to be more grassroots, uh, uh, down up uh, sort of approach. And uh, in the UK, I've got uh, about seven minutes left, I think. Uh, in, in, in the UK, we have seen uh, um, a, a very short window of excitement about desistance theory. So, so uh, this was 2018 and an article appeared uh, it, it, talking about youth justice uh, and, and asked whether desistance approaches and youth justice were the next passing fad or a sea change for, for the positive. Uh, I, it's been a while since I read the article, but I think they, they largely concluded uh, along the fad. And, and if, if they did, they, they were right uh, in that uh, nowadays, the, the, the next the next big thing in the UK youth justice is children first. Uh, and, and it's a, a, a complicated a, a other argument that, that sounds a lot like desistance, but 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 it, it, it has decided that desistance is out and and ch children first is in and 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 so so our moment in the sun has largely passed I, I, I think but but there were a number of of it, it, there was a, a good bit of excitement uh, while it lasted and 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 maybe it's still going I, I'm I'm a little bit cynical uh, of of desistance in in the real world. Um, for one thing, of course, uh, it, it inspired uh, to, uh, Tony Ward and, and and his development of the Good Lives model. Uh, you know, some people talk about this as a desistance model. Uh, it, you know, there there really isn't a, a desistance model out there, but but the Good Lives model is based on desistance research, uh, as are lots of, of, of programs that that are available. So so I, I'm on something called the Correctional Services Accreditation and Advisory panel uh, in, in, in the UK. And so uh, uh, we have to evaluate and uh, uh, credit all of the different uh, rehabilitative interventions that, that, that happen in, in prison and probation. And, and of, of the 18 accredited programs, the last time I checked, uh, through their, their, their theory manuals, 11 of them uh, cited desistance research as influencing the development of these programs. So, so this was very surprising to us. When we uh, um, uh, when we were doing the desistance research uh, originally, there was a kind of sense. Well, uh, you know, in fact, desistance as a name emerged. Uh, it used to be called spontaneous desistance, and 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 what they meant by that is it, it, taking from the medical model of spontaneous recovery that you could either recover due to medical intervention or you could spontaneously recover on your own. And, and, and so people were curious about spontaneous desistance. People who desisted without a program uh, was initially how we, we, we got into this work. Nowadays, we don't really think about you know, spontaneous desistance. I mean, uh, we're, we're just interested in desistance, whether, whether they had intervention and support, because everybody ultimately has some kind of supports 
and doing that. Uh, so anyhow, but we originally thought of desistance as outside of programs, and 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 now programs are are, are bringing desistance in to to the work they do. Also, an, another unexpected development has been the, the the interest among risk assessment in desistance research. So so um, risk assessment. Typically, like it says on the 10, focuses on people's deficits. What are their risks? What are their needs? Um, desistance research focuses more on people's strengths. And, and we have argued that the, the, the kind of forever focusing on people as risk uh, can be a self-fulfilling prophecy and can lead to more risk uh, by focusing on people's risk. So, so uh, there's been a, a real movement to look at protective factors, strengths. Uh, there, there's a, a brand new, the, the, the British... Um, um, prisons and probation are about to uh, uh, unleash a, 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 a huge new uh, strengths assessment uh, uh, um, uh, 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 program uh, in, into the, the the way we do business. Um, and, and some of this is, is about uh, um, the, the, this movement of, of dropping the labels and and and. and uh, assuming that people aren't just uh, the worst thing that they've ever done, and 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 you know we we got very interested in this thing, uh, a personality disorder and and dangerous and severe personality disorder, and everybody had to have some kind of disorder, and 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 uh, it got to the point where where you know ninety some percent of people in prison have one of these disorders, personality disorders, in which case, what, what, uh, you know, what good are these diagnoses doing us anymore? And so we're, we're moving away from disorder and moving more toward formulation and in, in, in our justice work. And, and very much like desistance, the formulation focuses on people's stories. Uh, how did they get here? Who are they? And, 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 and if you want to help them work with their their issues focus on stories not uh, some label of, of of what they've got finally and this is what i've been uh, hoping to to get to and i, I do have time mm. i think the most interesting contribution desistance has made and the most literal um you know again if we think that 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 working um with with uh, everything i know as a desistance researcher has come from listening to people's success stories so if that's what has has gotten me my expertise in assistance, why not uh, uh, cut out the middleman and and just bring those success stories to our our clients? Uh, and 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 there's there's a lot of work that has done this uh, uh, over the decades, but but in particular now there's a, a real interest in the, this idea of what we used to call wounded healers and now are called experts by experience or credible messengers uh, um, or, or lived experience. This idea um, that one person, one such credible messenger once told me, he said, how do you get through a minefield? He said, re-entry, reintegration is like a minefield. He says, how do you get through a minefield? There's only one way to get through it. You follow the person in front of you. And if they get out alive, you walk in their footsteps. And and yeah, and 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 it's a great uh, a, a, a great little motto that 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 uh that I have quoted a, a, ever since. Um and these uh um uh, wounded healers, credible messengers can now be found uh, doing all sorts of work, but including the work that we used to think of as, as sort of police work. Uh, um, they're out there doing what we call violence interruption, trying to, to stop crime before it happens with, with young people on the streets. Uh, and, 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 and we've worked with a number of these in, in, in Northern Ireland, where I were, lived for 20 years. Uh, uh, Ex-prisoners, for, former, formerly incarcerated, got very in, in, invested in, in restorative justice in, in interventions and in, in delivery. Um, and, and in all of this work, uh, this is uh, two, two great uh, credible messenger friends of mine. Uh, uh, Gethin Jones tells this, the, this story. Gethin is a, um, a, a storyteller who brings his uh, uh, lived experience uh, of incarceration and, 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 and more uh, um, to, to prisoners all over the world uh, and, 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 and probation groups and the like. And he said, one of these guys, he was giving this talk, uh, his, his story, as he gives many, many times. He was giving his story to a group um, uh, of life prisoners in, 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 a, in a British prison. And one of them came up to him and he said, uh, um, your, your story gives me hope. He says, do you know what hope stands for? 
and and uh, um, uh, uh, Gethin says, uh, "What do you mean uh, uh, stands for? I know what it means to me, but but what what do you what do you mean by that?" And he says, "Hope is an acronym. It means hearing other people's experiences, uh, and 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 that sharing of of, of experiences." is what we mean by hope it was a brilliant uh, a brilliant quote and i always try to make sure i give that that to now of course it won't work in every language but but it, it works very well in english uh, uh, as an acronym so the 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 uh, um the, the punchline i wanted to get to is that these stories have gone from academia to practice and are now starting to to hit the mainstream and and in and, and really important ways that that, that uh, I, I think um, um, can 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 have a, a, an impact on the way we think about criminal justice in, in society. So so uh, we're starting to see the 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 development of, of and, and this is, is grandiose thinking, but a social movement of the formerly incarcerated. And and in countries like the United States, where one out of three adult males has a, a, a criminal record, you, you've got a huge number of, of, of potential movement participants now not all of them are in this movement but but uh, when when you've incarcerated as many people as as, as we have in the united states um it it, it creates the the potential for a, a mass movement of, of individuals and 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 uh the the motto of this this movement has been uh like many others before it nothing about us without us that is to say Ex-prisoners are now getting involved at every level uh, of policy, uh, uh, practice, d discussion, academia. Uh, all the discussions we're having about prison and people in prison are now recognizing that they need to have invited at the table um, those people with, with lived experience. And, and of course, it, you know, this conference is perfect example of, of that, 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 that kind of recognition. Uh, some people call this a form of epistemic justice. And, and the idea is that advocates, professionals have spoken for us for many years. Now it's our time to speak for ourselves. This is a group in California called All of Us or, or None. And, and, and the social media, the new media is, is, is really helping this process. So a number of podcasts, websites, uh, um, uh, other things that I'm not on, Instagram and TikTok and so forth, are, are, are bringing these messages to a much wider audience uh, than, than, they, than they had ever been before. And again, it's these stories uh, that, that are driving this. It's the, the, the lived experience that that is 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 what's so powerful in changing attitudes in ways that our statistical research and criminology never has been able to change anything uh um these stories do so so this is a, a group in, in new york city uh justice leadership usa or jail usa say uh we use uh, 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 th that our stories uh, to tell the truth about race and class discrimination in a way that helps people see the reality of criminal justice People respond to stories. You may forget the data, but you don't forget our, our stories. So, so um, uh, as somebody who's been studying criminal uh, narratives, uh, and, and I don't know why I use criminal there, desistance narratives for, for a lot of years, it's really rewarding to see these narratives um, going public in, in such a big way. I said I would uh, come back to, to Paul Doak. Uh, Paul's a, a, a perfect I example. Paul uh, went on a... a, a a fascinating journey, very much along the lines of making good, since he was one of my participants in making good that I, that I talked about. Went on to get his, his PhD. Uh, he he's now uh, well, sorry, he's now studying uh, a, a PhD in in criminology, uh, and 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 for his PhD, uh, he's doing uh, um, desistance from crime, but long term desistance from crime, like his own, which has been 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 several decades. Of, of desisting and and, and it's it, it it's a, a a wonderful thing for me interpersonally uh to see one of the people that was a, a subject of, of my book now become the author of his own work but from a metaphorical standpoint uh uh it, it really captures this change uh from desistance research when we started we were very much traditional researchers. We were the experts going into the field, listening to these stories, stealing the stories, writing our books and so forth. And now 
the storytellers are, are, are doing their own PhDs, writing their own books. And it's, it's, it's a wonderful kind of 360 uh, and, and, and really kind of captures that change in the field. So, so thanks very much uh, for, for all your attention. Did go slightly over, yeah, but yeah. Thank you. Uh, now I think we have like 15, 20 minutes for yeah, questions. 15. So now it's your time. It's your opportunity. Okay, if you are shy, I can start with an easy one. <laughs> okay, nobody wants to go first. Just, oh, we have our question. Uh, thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now you have uh, the experience. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Shed, for presentation. Uh, my question, and uh, I, I want to. Uh, your your opinion about this uh, in Latvia last two years we have a system then in all Latvia in uh, every unit in in every city we have a professionals who just uh, works with the youngest clients okay uh, 14 to 25 years okay and uh, what do you think this is the right way hmm. what we are doing? And uh, that mean not just uh, clients. We are uh, we are qualifying the professionals also. Mm. And in my units, from ten employers, uh, there's three just who works with the youngest yeah. clients. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I, I uh, I'll, I'll give you a professional opinion. It's not right or wrong. It, 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 it's just just my view. But but so. You know, many countries ha have done this, uh, uh, have created, you know, youth justice systems to recognize the difference between youth and, and, and adulthood. Uh, I like the sound uh, of yours in the sense that, that you know, we, 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 um, we struggle with, with when youth uh, begins, but, but, but importantly, when it ends. And we tend to have this kind of cutoff at 18 years old where, where you know, it, it's 17 and a half, they're, they're a child. And so children first and these kind of focus uh, where, where we're constantly reminding people, this was a child that, 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 that did this, so therefore needs protected. And then as soon as the, the kid turns 18, he's an adult and screw him, you know, we're going to, we're going to, uh, you know, throw, throw the book at him. And, and, and yeah, uh, uh, obviously some young people, even in their, their late teens, suddenly get matured into to oh this is an adult crime so we're going to treat them through through the adult system and, and these sort of things so so uh I, I i like the sound of going up to 25 uh, or 24 did you say uh 25 25 25 yeah. in that it's more in line with what the brain science and, and others is saying about you know brain development continues well into the the, the 20s and 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 um you know uh, obviously you still have the same thing 24 and a half a young person, but 25 is an older. So there will always be an arbitrary cutoff, but this one is, is more generous and it recognizes this process of emerging adulthood. It is also, you know, uh, um, let's see if this will go straight. No, no. Oh, I messed everything up. Uh, in the uh, uh, If I got to that age crime curve, you know, you're capturing the, the, the bulk of the curve by going to, to 20, 25 years old. So, so I, 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 I think that, that that's good. I think there is some expertise that's needed. I also think there's a lot of, you know, care that's needed. I mean, I, I, I'm of a, a mindset, you know, uh, the, 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 the adult system should be more like the, the youth system, not in, in, in the terrible way that it's often delivered. But, uh, you know, if the reason for youth system is that people can change, um, the truth is adults can change even more. They're even more likely to change than, than having a 17 year old where, where, you know, okay, he's still 17 and there's going to be some tough years ahead. Whereas if I have a 37 year old, I know I've got someone who, who wants to turn their life around because the, you know, the clock is ticking and they're, they're starting to see their own mortality and these kind of things. So, so, uh, um, all that is to say, uh, um, instinctively, I think it's probably right but 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 at, at some level shouldn't we have that same approach you know the the brain continues to change over time as does the the, the rest of our lives and 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 i think uh, um this idea that young people need rehabilitative whereas adults just need punishment is is, is wrong-headed as well yeah, yeah. but interesting oh, and, and, and good luck with it
Okay. Wow. Quite a lot yeah, of questions. Before I, I pass the, the mic, I would like to remind our colleagues online that they can also pose questions in chat. So please do so. And uh, your questions will be transferred to, to Shad immediately. So now over to you. Thank you. Uh, Shad, I'd like to go back to your comments earlier where you said rehab is done to them, desistance is done by them. Resonates with me a lot, but um, I also kind of want to push back a little. So I'd love to hear your perspective because it makes me think of the idea that you can lead someone to water, but you can't make them drink. Yeah. In the work that we do, I see a lot of our rehabilitation efforts as guiding them to that water and teaching them how to drink it if they don't know how, metaphorically speaking, of course. And so I think when we talk about what works, you did say, to be fair, that they're not opposing forces, but I would say that the outcomes we're looking for in the work that we do are those desistance factors that you mentioned. So I, I don't know, just the language around that's kind of working me a bit. I wonder yeah. if you could speak more to that. Yeah, no, it's a great point. So um, yeah, I, 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 I've written somewhere, you know, the, this idea of, of, of the, yes, done to them, you know, no one in rehabilitation outside of maybe Clockwork Orange uh, <laughs> uh, actually sees them as correcting people, as changing people. You know, no one, uh, I, I don't think in this room, has ever corrected anyone or changed anyone. And 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 I don't think it, it's, it, it, you know, I think most of us know we're working with people. We are, we are trying to support their change where we're going to, as you say, teach. Uh, and, 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 you know, as a teacher, I know I'm not getting inside anyone and rewiring their brains as, as, as a teacher, I'm giving out the information. I'm going to try to be as supportive as I can. I try to recognize people have different learning patterns and these things. Uh, but it's down to them at the end of the day. And that's why we assess people and we give them scores and, and things because it's a, it's a two way street. So, so yes, uh, uh, that was a quote from Fergus uh, uh, and, and really what, what he's referring to there is, is less the, the, the actual practitioner who again I think you're right no one uh, thinks they're correcting people's brains but it's more the rhetoric and 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 indeed the the the, the research uh, the way we evaluate these programs suggests that we're supposed to be correcting people and oh well you didn't you know look crime got worse in the UK there was a famous study of of, of sex offender treatment the, the the experimental group went up uh, had had a recidivism rate five percent higher than the, the the treatment group. Off the alarm bells go the newspapers, people running around uh, screaming, uh, the, "Your treatment's making people worse." You're you're no, the treatment's not making people worse. The, your your evaluation method may imply that that's what what's happening, but but uh, this isn't what's happening. We again outside of Clockwork Orange. We can't control people, uh, and 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 that's where the the desistance way of of researching recognizes that people are uh, you know living lives. They, they, as much as we want to think that we are uh, um, um, working in a laboratory where we can assign people randomly to these these groups, and then we'll give one this treatment and one get no, no treatment. People are living complex lives, and they're both going home to complex communities and neighborhoods where with complex families and complex needs. Uh, and 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 our treatment programs are a tiny part of, of, of those bigger lives. So so when 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 Fergus is saying that desistance belongs to the desister, it, it's to say that that the desistance research looks at the whole person and and, and their journey, not just the twelve week or twenty four week uh, uh, intervention they got, and and did that intervention work or or, or not. That's a study of us of practice whereas desistance is a study of uh, of them uh, of, of lives and 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 that's the kind of contrast i i think he was making thank you very much go next um i had a whole collection of chaotic questions and um that kind of cleared up one of them so i'm sorry if this still has chaos attached to it um <laughs> I've been a qualitative researcher for about 25 years now, and I've seen the evolution of um, move from asking people to talk about their views and experiences, a very kind of like, you know, early 2000s phrase to really, um, as, as I progress to being in my PhD in narrative research, and I'm really interested and invested in people's stories. Mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> but I still find um, commissioners, the real world research people who are doing research from resistant to hearing people's stories, especially when it comes to evaluations where the result isn't what they want at the end. So someone saying, do you know, actually, um, either that was the right, wasn't the right program for me, or that was the right program for me, or that some people know to say the right things because they've been in the system long enough. And some people say stuff and I, I'm, I take myself back to my early um, years when I was first seeing um, someone from um, with prison experience talking about their experience. And it was with a well-known organization in the UK and they came out and they said, um, prison was the best thing that happened to me. And the woman that was standing next to me who was working for against prison uh, organization was like, oh no. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, well, how is there not value in that person's experience of saying their stories? So my chaotic way of getting around is how do we say to commissioners, you have to have patience. How do we say to evaluators, you have to have patience in, in seeing the value of a story because I feel I'm not there yet. And I want to have a better thing to say other than this is somebody's, this, this is somebody's reality. This is somebody's experience. Yeah, yeah. And there's so much we can get from that. Yeah. I need something a little bit more crunchy. Yeah. Any advice? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, no, wonderful, wonderful question. Uh, gets at uh, lots of my own experiences over the years and, and yeah, and some of the most thorny problematic. So, so that, you know, it, it, raising the, and, and it's, it's almost got a, it should have a name for it, but the prison is the best thing that ever happened to me. Narrative is, is something that, that all of us as narrative researchers have, have wrestled with. I, I get emails from, from people all the time saying, you know, Hi, we've not met, but I've got this really thorny issue I want to raise with you. Uh, and, and it's like, you're not the first one that, that has heard that story. Lot, lots of people hear that story. And, 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 it's it you know it, it does uh, um uh, so so uh, uh, gosh yeah chaotic you know you know you've got me I'm gonna be just as chaotic um your 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 first point well there's there was about six of the in there but but one uh, one of them was yeah that that um it's more than just asking people um you know how did you find the program and and getting that that qualitative uh thing you know uh, uh, um that that can be valuable. Um, it, it's a step. Uh, uh, it, it's certainly more. It, it's it's more interesting than just reading their outcome. Uh, uh, did they recidivate? Did they not recidivate again? Because so often that has so little to do with the program and so much to do with other things that that we can't as as practitioners we can't grow from just uh, seeing those 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 evaluation outcomes. Uh, uh, they, they just frustrate us, and people just say, "I know this works because I can feel it working," and, and 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 those numbers are too distant. So having feedback is is, is a step, but yeah, it, it, it's much more complex than just a kind of uh, uh, the three lines of "Did you like this?" Because people will always you know, pick up uh, something unusual. Well, there was no, uh, no, no coffee for the last uh, week. And, and, you know, <laughs> the, the, these sort of petty, but, but real things. Um, so, so you do need the narrative and, and what the narrative is, is it's situating the intervention into that wider life. And, 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 and those can be just so fascinating uh, when you do get people talking about how, oh, you know, why did you come to this program? Oh, well, I, I was just ticking a box, but but then uh, but then after I, I I went six or seven weeks into it, I I, I really started to respect the, the the facilitator because she did this uh, in this example, uh, and and it may, really made me realize that she is someone I can be trusted in any way. When you can get those longer, interesting narratives of, of their involvement. It can be so helpful for us as, as practitioners and say, oh, we can learn from these people's experiences of our of our courses. If you can get into those long kind of situating them in what they wanted when they came, what they wanted when they left and, 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 and the, these sort of things. Um, but the the yeah, uh, so, so 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 I think it, it, I, I think we can and, and should try to sell narrative on. Uh, 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 the world of, of evaluation. Now, uh, it's not easy. And one of the reasons here, although I've got a transition, one of the reasons it's not easy is because all of us are primed and are afraid of anecdotes as, as you know, anybody can pull out one person who says this program was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. It changed my life. I I, I had a, a, a wonderful experience. This is two, two, uh, 
too hard to, to explain too much of it. But we were in prisons uh, um, doing a, a, a big participatory action research project. And 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 we uh, um, were doing this with a group called User Voice Organization in the UK, which is led by ex-prisoners. Uh, and, and, and so one of the things, whenever we were doing a focus group, they always wanted me or the academics to be paired up with somebody who had come from prison. Uh, for whatever reason, we were in an obscure prison in a place where user voice didn't have uh, uh, any uh, um, uh, uh, offices or, or, or volunteers. And so they, they, they got a friend of a friend to come along. And, 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 and anyway, uh, he, he came and he had never interacted with user voice, but he knew that he was to be the, the, the ex-prisoner uh, on this panel. He knew he was to play a role. And so he, he when, when, when uh, uh, we were doing this, he started telling this narrative of, well, user voice saved my life. The, these guys totally turned my life around and they're not that kind of an organization. They don't save lives. They, they, they use uh, people, uh, their skills to, to, to do research and do other things. And anyway, he just knew that that's a kind of script that that people often want you to say. This saved me, uh, and 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 so we're nervous about those kind of testimonies in 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 a, in a big way. Uh, that said, and and I am too. I don't want to hear that that because we, we you know we, we know there's motivation behind that, and and the the prison saved my life. There's huge, interesting motivation. It's about shame management. It's about, you know, who wants to say you 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 wasted 10 years of your life in, in a place? Much better to say that that, yeah, actually, if it weren't for prison, I wouldn't be doing the things I am now and and, and these sort of things. So so there's good narrative reasons why people tell that 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 narrative. But uh, um, but it, 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 you know it's just a uh, it, it what, what we sometimes call a press release. It, it, it's an easy thing to say. Well, this program saved me. Okay, I, I don't want to hear your press release. I want to really know you. <laughs> Tell me when did you first come to the program and what was this? And 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 and, and you, you do a two hour uh, uh, interview with somebody and you won't get that kind of th that that bad uh, um, um, just advertisement anecdote, I guess. But but great question. Let, let's talk more. Uh, Thank you. That clarifies why it's difficult for me to understand as well. <laughs> yes, right, right. Yeah, it's sad to read. Uh, we talked before that we have uh, almost yeah, 200 people online. Oh, yes. And some of them uh, put their questions to you. And we try to summarize. And uh, uh, I ho uh, we hope we we'll capture what we wanted to to ask you. Okay. Uh, some of the um, uh, the first question is uh, someone uh, hear you in another lecture or maybe read about. Done a few. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, when you talk about the importance of rituals uh, and ceremonies. Oh, yeah. And you mentioned it that there is no formal rituals or ceremonies at the end of the. Of, of uh, the say the system, and they want to know how uh, these rituals or ceremonies for you uh, should be sh uh, so important, and what uh, the system can do for putting it in place. Yeah, great. Uh, so yeah, the, the they've heard the talk. You guys haven't, so I'll give a, just the, the the thirty second version of, of the argument. But but yeah, rituals. Um, you know we're we're we've seen a, a decline of rituals in our society at, at some level with with uh, our societies broadly uh with with the decline in and and religious attendance and and so forth but uh religion uh, religion religion still plays a role but but rituals still play a major role in 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 everything we do and and, and you can think about them in in, in academic terms we we love a, a good ritual whether it's a a book launch or or a uh um, a graduation obviously uh a, a induction a, a, any sort of major turning point in in, in somebody's academic journey a promotion uh we celebrate it with a ritual and 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 these things aren't uh they they, they don't have to to be elaborate but but they have to be a, a focusing of attention on this new change and 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 uh, often involve uh, breaking a bread or 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 or, or uh, a shared toast uh, uh, along the lines of of, of uh, congratulating someone on the new change and and uh, um, recognizing it formally uh, and and some people are very shy about rituals I don't like birthday uh, parties uh, uh, but but uh, you know the the people who have 
managed to, to to avoid any of these recognition. You know, I didn't go to my graduation. I didn't go to this. I didn't go to to uh, uh, my my you know uh, uh, um, professorial talk and and all these sort of things. Uh, um, they 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 suffer uh, um, this imposter syndrome often. Uh, they don't actually believe. Uh, they, they, they're worthy of these things. And so so they, they, they don't, and, and, and with me and birthday parties, yeah, you're in denial that you're getting older and you don't want it to be recognized and celebrated and, and all these kind of things. So, so um, uh, people who, who are desisting, who, who are changing their lives, um, it, it's a big change. And yet it's one that we don't have structured rituals for. And so it's, it's not surprising to me or to any anthropologist uh, that uh, uh, people who are desisting are often, uh, as as uh, David Motz had talked about, and drifting, uh, and they they can drift from one side to another uh, because they haven't been formally, you know, if if you have a a a, a formal ritual welcoming you into a club, uh, um, whether it be marriage or or employment or what have you, you're much li less likely to leave that because, gosh, we just went through that big ritual. Now it doesn't mean you know people can't. Uh, break off uh, those bonds, but but it it, it helps to cement th those bonds. So, so uh, uh, where uh, um, individuals have gotten these uh, spontaneous kind of rituals of reintegration, where they've been formally recognized as new people, uh, uh, it seems to strengthen their desistance process. And we found a lot of this in, in the Liverpool study and elsewhere. And now I've 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 used my thirty seconds uh, or more. What uh, the question was. Uh, what what do I remind you? Was what uh, was what we can do in the system for improving these yeah. rituals or for great? Yeah. So so right. So so um, I you know I would listen to to to, to clients. Uh, you know it, it's best that these uh, um, uh, rituals are, are organic and natural and not uh, something uh, uh, that. that you know, okay, let's all go on a rite of passage. And at the end of this rite of passage, we will give you a certificate saying you have completed the rite of passage. As it, 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 nice and, and, and logical as that is, uh, uh, it, it would be better to 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 be uh, or, and, and more meaningful uh, organized by uh, people them, them, themselves and 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 uh, uh, with that lived experience of people who know what what would be a meaningful uh, celebration and so forth. But but it's also important to not be cynical about things. You know, we, we often as, as professionals can feel like, oh, what you know, what would a, a certificate uh, uh, be to to this person in, in on probation or or this person in prison, it's just a piece of paper and these kind of things. But but you meet uh, uh, so many people desisting uh, 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 and otherwise who will 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 show me certificates that they earned uh, from 15 years ago that they'd held on to that means so much to them. You know, that, that so it, it, it's important that we not uh, think that that somehow because our our, our clients uh, um, uh, uh, don't come from uh, uh, middle class environments where where they're regularly given these kind of you know uh, famously in the U.S. graduating from kindergarten or graduating from from you know grade school primary school and these sort of things where they're they're given certificates all the time. Uh, um, they, 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 they they you know we 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 don't want to assume that these things aren't meaningful uh, because they, they they often uh, very much are. So so. Uh, um, recognizing the, the the rituals that we've already got and and that we do and how many of those rituals are are degradation rituals are bringing you reminding people that actually you're a suspicious character and therefore I need to, to collect your urine or I need to do all these uh, the degradation rituals that we we, we do a, a, of a uh, a regular process uh, um these are uh, uh, and and so we we see things in like drug courts where where you have wonderful rituals of, of the, the 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 judge hugging the the the, the graduates of, of a drug court process or or certainly education inside prisons has been doing these for for years where where we 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 run uh, graduations and things inside uh, or or outside prisons so so uh, it's learning from success again and 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 finding what what rituals work elsewhere and 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 for who uh, but yeah uh, so we are out of time uh, <laughs> so. and. But uh, there is a question that uh, maybe you need a whole day for answering. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but if you can do in a couple of minutes, it should be perfect. 
<laughs> you mentioned it, our, our, our model and the assessment tools. And um, the question is what we can do for avoiding uh, that the bad use of these instruments can jeopardize the, uh, the existence process of a client. Yeah. Uh, I, I, okay. So this is uh, like uh, focusing on deficits and risk assessment. Yeah. So one way is to balance them uh, with strengths uh, and, and say, look, we're, we're not just assessing all, all the bad things about you. We're also assessing uh, where, where where you've got hidden talents, where where you've got uh, uh, things that could be developed and, and, and work on what, what are your strengths and their positives. And then also, yeah, I, I, I think we as... Um, uh, as justice professionals probably overemphasize risk in in that you know it, it's for our own protection that we can show that we've done every kind of risk uh, assessment oftentimes these aren't being utilized in real practice any more than just sort of putting people in in categories high medium low risk and 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 if we don't actually use all of the risk assessments that we do, do 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 we need them all? If, if we're, we're tight on resources, which we always are, uh, uh, wouldn't we want to, to to focus those research on on practices that that are actually helping people rather than than endless kind of assessment uh, issues? So, two two thoughts. Excellent. Thank you very much, uh, Shad. Very very helpful. Very focused on practice. Well done. Thank you. <laughs>